back to my automated build system series and tutorials. In part one of the series, we use the Azure web interface to set up a Linux VM in Azure. Then we install Docker on that VM and set up secure communication to the remote Docker host. In this video, we will do the same thing, but through the Azure command line interface. I'm calling this part 1.5 since this is just another way to accomplish what we did in part one. If you're happy using the Azure portal, then you can skip right to part two. Note that in this series, I assume you're on a computer similar to mine, a MacBook running Mac OS. It's certainly not a requirement to do this stuff though. You could be on a Linux or Windows client, no problem. Though some of the client side tooling changes around a bit. I'm confident that you'll figure it out. So you can install the Azure CLI locally, or if you run Docker locally, and if you're following along with this tutorial, I suspect that you do, you can run Azure CLI in a Docker container. That's my favorite way to do it since you don't have to install anything on your local machine. So let's pop over into terminal window and show you how this works. Very simple, I already have an image installed, so this will be quick, and you are to Azure CLI. All right, for this tutorial, we are going to create a folder uh, to hold all of our config settings. I'm going to build setup. A folder to hold our keys and one to hold our certificates. And let's generate our SSH keys so we can SSH into our VM once we create it. Putting those into the keys folder we just created. Very good. Next, we want to start up the Azure CLI Docker container, and we also want to link it to our current directory so that uh, we can get to these certificates and keys from within our container. So let's do that. And it is running. We can do a and that is running. Next, we need to log in to the Azure CLI. And this is nifty. It's similar to when you authorize a video device like an Xbox One with a provider like HBO. And you're given a code and we're gonna run this command, a Docker exec command to that container. And we're running the Azure login command. All right, so we need to go to this link in our browser. We need to enter this code. And ask which account I'm using. Now back here, it will authenticate. Awesome. Now I have two Azure subscriptions, so I wanna make sure I'm using the correct one so I can send another docker exec command to the Azure CLI container, and this time I'm just doing Azure account set with my account name. That succeeded. I'm gonna kind of breeze through the commands for the rest of this tutorial. There's a lot of them, and there's not a lot of commentary necessary. Basically, we're just doing docker exec to send Azure commands to the Azure CLI running in that container. There's also an accompanying blog post where you can go get all the code for this. Also, in tutorial 1.75, um, I'll introduce you to a shell script that I have to automate this whole process anyway. All right, so let's get going. First, we're gonna create a resource group. Then a VNet. Next, we'll create the subnet. Next, we'll create the IP address. And now we'll create the private IP address and we can actually specify it since we're using the CLI. Then 
Now we'll create the network security group. Now we need to create the inbound security rules. We're going to open port 22 first for SSH communication. Now we'll create a rule to allow traffic on port 80 because we know we're gonna to wanna to hit Jenkins through port 80. Now we're gonna allow communication on port 2376 for secure Docker host communication. Now we're going to bind that network security group to our network interface card or NIC. Now we can finally do what we came here to do, create the VM. Everything we've done so far is just a pre-requirement or something I want to set specifically before I set up the VM. You'll notice here I'm also linking to the public key file that we linked to our Docker container at the config folder. All right, now that that's complete, we can go over into Azure portal and see that we have all of the pieces we need. We have our VM. Just like we did when we provisioned it from the portal. Now we could cheat and get the public IP address from the portal but I'd rather get it from the command line so I can script this in the future. It's kind of a convoluted command and I'm setting the public IP address equal to an environment variable called public IP address. All right, there we have it. Now this next step we have to do because there's a slight bug or issue with setting up a VM from the command line. We have to run an app get update before we can install the Docker extensions or the Docker extension installation fails. So I'm going to do that via SSH and here's the command to do that. SSHing in and running app get update. Now I'm also going to pop over to my domain DNS provider really quick and pop this public IP address in here. As I mentioned in part one, I really want custom DNS names so I can have uh, TLS certificates later on and actually have SSL TLS security. All right, so just like in part one, we still have to create our TLS certificates. So let's go
All right, now we have our server and client certificates and we can use those to access our Docker host. If you need more explanation about what we were doing there, you can look at part one, the video and the blog post. I explained a little bit more there. Now to transfer these to Azure, we need to get them in base 64. So let's do that real quick. And the way the Docker extension accepts these is through two JSON files, a public and a protected JSON file. So we're gonna create those on the fly here with echo commands really simply. The public command just tells Docker what port to listen on for secure communication. The protected JSON actually has the contents of those base64 encoded certificates and keys. So if you were to cat that, it would show the keys. All right, now that we have the certificates that we need, we can install the Docker extensions on the VM we just created. So we're gonna use a Docker exec command uh, into that Azure CLI container. And this is just Azure VM extension set. And we're gonna put it into the Docker build resource group, Docker build VM. We're installing Docker extensions this version, and we have a path here to our pub and prod JSON files. All right, it's installing the extensions. And there you have it, our Docker extensions were installed in our VM. Let's try this out with TLS security here. So we're still in the search directory. So we can just point to a CA cert key here. I'm still using the public IP address environment variable. Just doing a version on the server side. And you can see I get response. If I try this without TLS, I should get an error. There you go. So there you have it. We are set up to the same place we were in version one, all through the command line, and all through the Docker container command line. I didn't have to install the Azure CLI on my Mac, which is probably not a big deal, but I don't have to worry about versions or anything like that. I can just use my Docker container, and I can now kill that Docker container if I want to. All right, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial of how to set up a VM in Azure with Docker extensions and secure communications all through the command line.